So hi everyone, welcome to SNEV series on uh, extra cervical societies around the world. My name is Maimun Al Musawa. I'm a PhD student at CTERM, uh, UKM Malaysia. Uh, for those who are new to SNEF, SNEF is the student network on extra cellular vesicles. We are aiming to connect students uh, doing EV research around the world. We are collaborating as well recently with, with ICEF, the International Society for Extra Cellular Vesicles. So today we're delighted to have Dr. Iman to talk about the EV uh, Society, the Egyptian EV Society for Extracellular Vesicles. So let me introduce our special guest, uh, Dr. Iman. Dr. Thabit is a lecturer of medical physiology at Alexandria Faculty of Medicine, as well as the vice executive manager of the Center of Excellence for Research in Regenerative Medicine and Research Applications with more than five years of experience in the field of regenerative medicine and extracellular vesicles. Dr. Thabit first encountered EV uh, and microRNAs during her PhD at CERRMA in the field of regenerative medicine and reproductive diseases and has been working on the roles of EVs in different body systems throughout her postdoctoral studies. Being one of the first few people to work on EVs in Egypt, she was motivated to start a society to connect all researchers working in the field. Uh, Dr. Thabit has contributed to the scientific optimization of isolation and characterization protocols in the lab and has co-authored various publications in the EV field. Uh, Dr. Thabit has earned a support grant as principal investigator during the first call of the Alexandria University Research Support Initiative to study the role of slow-release extracellular vesicles in muscle regeneration. She's also a team member in several other running projects funded by, by the Cardiovascular Research Education and Prevention Foundation and Science and Technology Development Fund in the field of extracellular vesicles. Dr. Iman, thank you so much for accepting our invitation. We're very excited to learn about EV research in Egypt and uh, in MENA region. So yeah, the floor is yours. Okay, uh, thank you so much for this uh, introduction for, and uh, thank you for this invitation. Uh, and thank you, Maimuna and Sarah, for moderating this session. Uh, so I'm glad you introduced me. So I have to skip that part. Uh, so I'm here. I'm very more than happy and, uh, and excited to talk about extracellular vesicles um, throughout the MENA region. I'm going to focus more on Egypt. And I'm going to focus more on Alexandria. And I'm going to focus more and more even on our work in the Center of Excellence in Regenerative uh, uh, Medicine, what I'm just going to call CERMA. This is what we call it for short. Um, so um, I'd like to start off by like who, where we are. Uh, so a lot of people actually don't know where the city of Alexandria is, like where Egypt is mainly a, famous by Cairo. So let me just point out that we're just this small uh, portal city by the Mediterranean, Mediterranean Sea. We're just like 1,600 kilometer squared with over 5 million uh, population. So we're all cramped up in this tight space. Uh, however, like has been known to um, two of the world uh, seven wonders of the world, the uh, famous Alexandria Library. Uh, the famous Alexandria Library was, of course, burnt down and then was rebuilt as this disc shape where you can uh, it's now uh, you can see it now here and that's facing the sun and holds millions of books. Um, and uh, holds conferences, a lot of our Alexandria uh, Library. Uh, as well as we have a lot, we are a small city, but we have a lot of uh, touristic sites. And uh, this, I have to say, this is the Greco-Roman Museum, uh, which has been uh, under renovation for more than 18 years. And it has just opened like just last week, I think. So we're all excited to revisit um, the Greco-Roman Museum. Um, so. Um, also in this small city, um, I'm going to talk generally about Alexandria University. Uh, although our small city was um, overpopulated, but our university actually uh, is among the six, the, the top six percent of world universities according to the web uh, webometrics ranking uh, in 2022, and we scored. I mean, the top 50 across 167 uh, research topics. So that's not so bad for such a small town. 
um, and overall, our overall ranking among the Egyptian universities is actually number two, just second to Cairo University. Um, so uh, this is big for us, and it's also a challenge for us. Um, this is generally Alexandria University. Uh, the Faculty of Medicine was established in the 1942 under uh, the era of uh, King Farouk and was made with tremendous efforts uh, from Ibrahim Basha and, and uh, professors of uh, surgery like Mohammed Mahfouz and others. Uh, so we, we have a lot of history to deal with in, in doing our research and to complete on. Um, so there's a lot of about us here. So um, as part of the Alexandria Faculty of Medicine, uh, we have a medical research center, uh, which is uh, dedicated to um, research in all disciplines, including molecular biology, genomics, um, um, lots of um, chromatography, uh, genomics, uh, several other fields. And within that medical research center is uh, our Center of Excellence for Regenerative Medicine and, and, and its applications. Uh, this lab was um, originally founded um, in 2016 by our late professor, uh, Dr. Ghada Murad, which was a professor of uh, histology and cell biology and former head of uh, our lab. Um, with uh, Along with um, another team, um, she had, she founded this lab and with tremendous efforts and funds, multi-million funds, uh, she equipped the lab uh, for us. I have to say for us, this is what we've been working on uh, ever since. And given the high inflation and the economic um, crisis going on in the world, so we're really dealing with, um, we're really working with what she has uh, given us in the past. Uh, after her passing like, um, a couple of years ago, uh, Professor Dr. Radom Hanna, uh, which was her vice, uh, took over that lead and that heavy duty and is continuing in managing the lab and um, getting lots of funds. So basically managing the lab is um, uh, lab equipment maintenance and getting lots of funds for research. Um, along and uh, myself and uh, Dr. Marwa Khalif are her vice. Uh, we help manage the lab as well. Um, other than that, we're a group of multidisciplinary researchers uh, in all fields. Uh, so let me just I'll give you a quick um, idea about how um, our academic uh, roles are. We are mainly our roles in the, in the Faculty of Medicine are academic, which means like um, we mainly teach medicine uh, to undergraduates. So this is our main role. And then we do research on the side. So um, it's, it's kind of challenging. Uh, Main, you know, like, um, managing our time between research and lab and then our academic duties. Uh, that's why we need to be passionate about it. And that's why we really do this because we really uh, like this and we really love it. Um, we have molecular biologists, nanotechnologists, toxicologists, pathologists, and imaging experts and flow cytometry experts. So uh, we are the ones actually doing uh, all the research in the lab. Uh, our lab, just a quick overview, has also small, uh, smaller labs inside. It has also molecular biology labs, uh, stem cell and stem cell research lab, and a similar one with, just for cell culture and cancer cell lines. Uh, um, animal house with uh, individual ventilated cages and experimental uh, surgical room for primary isolations of tissues and cells from, um, from animals. Uh, and then there's flow cytometry. There's lots of pictures. Uh, I, I can, I, I, there was not enough space to add them all. But um, of course, our lab adheres to the guidance on good cell, uh, cell culture practice. Um, over the past years, because we knew that it's very important to connect to our neighbors, uh, Professor Dr. Reda and uh, um, Dr. Radwa have been always been uh, inviting um, uh, guests from all over Africa and um, the uh, Arab region. Uh, we had uh, visits from uh, Kenya, Nigeria, and Libya, all um, visiting our lab and forming collaborations and connections, uh, knowing that this is an, a fundamental part of research is connecting and, and communicating uh, our science. And a lot of visitors were very impressed with our lab and more specifically the team uh, the, and the expertise there. Uh, so let me just, before I actually start on my presentation, I have to say this, if if I've seen further, it's by standing on the shoulder of giants. 
uh, and then what we we will do or continue on from here is based on what has been done before. Um, so um, over the past decade, uh, decades, regenerative medicine and, uh, or research in Egypt has mainly focused on using uh, mesenchymal stem cells from different sources and on a variety of animal models. And I've just listed on the top of my head all the animal models that we have actually worked on and are published including wound healing, osteoarthritis, ovarian testicular failure, uh, neurodegenerative disease, um, even used uh, stem cells as drug delivery systems. And then the focus started shifting uh, to using the conditioned media of uh, mesenchymal stem cells, uh, followed by actually isolating uh, IV EVs from, uh, from this conditioned media. Uh, so what I'm basically going to cover uh, the, during this talk is our EV publications, uh, our grants and ongoing research. Uh, I'm going to stop uh, a lot of time on the challenges uh, and then how we build the society and then events, act activities and outreach. So um, the publication, I'm going to start off for oh, what other people have done. And I was just talking to Maimoun and Sarah before the we started that it was actually interesting digging up what other people were doing because we were kind of like focused on what we were doing. Um, I, I, saw, I saw a lot of review articles actually, and I was looking up uh, Egypt and then, okay, couldn't find a lot in Egypt. So tried a broader uh, geographical area. I found some uh, in Iran, they were working on global, human glibostoma cells and you using metformin um, and it's looking at the exosome uh, formation. Um, and then in Egypt, I saw actually uh, a group working on stem cell derived exosomes for treatment uh, in, uh, in mares and horses. So this was interesting seeing um, a lot of even species across different species. And then uh, there was this uh, group from Zuel University. I, I think these uh, researchers are from Zuel University who uh, did uh, wrote um, like a very comprehensive, impressive reviews on extracellular vesicles, and one of them was on the um, using EVs as a non-invasive tool for prenatal diagnosis. And, and this was interesting, uh, I think, to me because being mainly in the reproductive field, the research field. Um, however, I um, I could not um, bypass uh, the work of uh, Professor uh, Islam Saadeddin who was um, originally a professor from Zagazig University in Egypt, but is now in uh, South Korea. Uh, although he is not right now in um, Africa and the MENA region, but the weight of his work is uh, tremendous in the EV field that it's impossible to ignore. Uh, I actually connected to uh, Professor Islam Saadeddin a couple of times asking about some technical advice and he was always um, yeah, happy to help. And what was interesting, uh, Professor Islam Sagdin has, uh, of course, like more than 120 or more uh, publications, more than 3,000 citations. Um, and I've just collected here a few from his work on uh, exosomes or microvesicles, and sometimes he referred to them as nanovesicles. Uh, his work was quite interesting to me as well because he focused more on um, in the reproductive field and IVF and and also he did that across uh, different species. Um, so I, I might have missed uh, a few other or more publications happening in uh, MENA and Egypt other than review articles, but um, those are the ones like that were evident. Um, so let me show you uh, what we did uh, as Serma in, uh, um, in our publications on EV, and these are all uh, research uh, articles. I don't know, one of them is quite blurry. Um, so I'm gonna uh, like maybe talk about these first three ones uh, because these were actually the first um, EV uh, PhDs uh, done at Alexandria Un um, Faculty of Medicine. Uh, one of them is mine, this extracellular vesicles and the premature ovarian failure. Um, and my fellow friend, Gina Rostum was also working at the same time uh, on EVs on the liver fibrosis uh, model. And uh, we like uh, partnered up with another um, colleague who was working on uh, using Shastosoma Mansoni egg derived EVs as vaccines. So uh, it was during that time um, that we were well, we were like initially the first uh, people to work on EVs in our university. So there was a lot of trial and error. There was a lot of going around each other and um, uh, 
asking each other, what did you do? So let's uh, try this, let's try this. So it was actually fun doing this uh, together. And I'm happy that we all came out with the Q1 and Q2 publications um, from our work. Uh, but it, it's important because what we did and through this, a lot of trial and error, we actually uh, put down the foundations and we optimized lots of protocols uh, from these trials and errors. And we had lots of mishaps that happened, and I'm going to discuss also further. Uh, and these mishaps are actually what um, what uh, brought upon the, uh, the, uh, the troubleshooting uh, efficiency of what we're doing now. Um, later on uh, came other publications that also worked on uh, EVs. So uh, we had students working on uh, bone marrow derived EVs uh, and using them on a collagen uh, scaffold for wound healing. Uh, and even before that, um, uh, when I said we started just with the secret tome, uh, Professor Dr. Radul Mahenda, she worked on the condition media on wound healing. Um, so that was way before we even started uh, working on EVs. That was in 2015, uh, where she just added the, um, the condition media and saw some uh, impressive results. Uh, one of our students as well, uh, she worked, she was under the supervision of uh, Dr. Raida Murad, uh, but she did her work of, uh, in uh, South Australia, um, and she did characterization of urine stem cell derived EVs um, on the beta cell uh, stimulation. Um, so th th these are the publication, uh, publications that saw the light and were published. Uh, but however, we have lots of ongoing research um, happening now. And besides the research articles, we also have um, a, a chapter book. So um, this was a chapter book I wrote on the roles of extracellular vesicles in cancer metastasis. Uh, I, I've never worked with cancer uh, EVs, but I was very curious to find out uh, they must have a role in uh, cancer metastasis. So that's why I wrote that chapter, just because I was curious to find out how. Uh, and then we had another review article, although it was not uh, specifically to EVs, but um, it was on cardiac stem cells um, uh, and their um, future prospects. We had a whole section uh, discussing the, um, the EVs and how we can uh, leverage them as biomarkers for different uh, cardiac diseases, including ischemic heart disease, uh, heart failure, um, high, myocardial infarction. And what, uh, the, what are the expression profiles for each of these EVs? And we also discussed how these EVs can be used um, as therapeutic options and how, how are they communicating with other cells? How are they sending messages to other projects um, increasing their survival uh, and uh, fibroblast macrophages and promoting angiogenesis? Um, our ongoing research at CERBA now, so we have um, one publication that's currently under <laughs> under publication, which was found, uh, funded sorry, by uh, the CVRAP Foundation, which was using exosomal microRNA, uh, uh, microRNA-21 on project progenitors uh, in an in vitro oxygen glucose uh, reoxygenation model. So this work was done, finished, but it's currently under publication. Uh, we are ha uh, right now what's actually uh, cooking, literally cooking in the lab is a work of Collective students, uh, several postgraduate students are performing their PhDs and their masters at our lab uh, under the supervision of our uh, team. Uh, and, and there's, as you can see, there in all fields, we're using EVs on animal models of uh, periodontitis for this is for dentistry students. And then there's another student who took the EVs and loaded them on scaffolds and used them in an animal model, a large animal model of uh, a furication where she kind of create some kind of uh, bone defects. Uh, we're using them in Alzheimer's, RET model, um, isolating EVs from follicular fluid uh, of patients undergoing IVF, uh, antigen-coated EVs as vaccines for parasitic infection. Besides the one published, we have another ongoing research in, in, around the same area. Uh, there's also a group working on cancer-derived EVs as uh, target therapies. And uh, of course, the, the project that uh, Maimuna has mentioned earlier uh, on muscle regeneration in the rat model of uh, myopathy. So all of this is like happening and hopefully it uh, will be published like over the next uh, year. So um, let me just wrap up 
actually what we've done with EVs so far through these publications and ongoing research. So we isolated them from different sources, as you can see, from either um, zinc with stem cell media or uh, cancer cell media or from different body fluids. Uh, and the method we use for uh, isolation is the ultracentrifugation method. Uh, unless it's it's down and not working, we uh, uh, kind of uh, led um, routed out to other methods like using the ultrafiltration method. Uh, we looked at them using transmission electron microscopy, and we even uh, labeled them and traced them in vivo, um, and uh, imaged them using confocal microscopy. Uh, we measured their size using zeta sizing, their quantities using protein assays. Uh, we manipulated them using microRNAs, and we've tried two ways, uh, two ways in this um, by transfection uh, using an EV's transfection reagent, uh, or indirectly through transfecting the mother cells, then isolating the EVs, and and we saw better results with the indirect method. Uh, following that, we injected them. We we used them on in vitro models on the cells as well, and and, and we assessed their uptake, and we injected them into animal models also using different routes like using IV local organizations, which was very beneficial uh, to inject in very tight spaces such as like joints or ovarian bursa given that they're um, um, prepared in very small amounts with very high concentration so so this was actually an advantage and uh, we loaded them with antigens and um, used them as vaccine and bioengineered them into scaffold scaffolds for stability and long-term release uh, so this is basically all the techniques that has been going uh, around in, in our lab. And we are expanding, like we just started with the basic, the first three, and then just injecting them. But um, we keep on expanding um, our expertise and our um, techniques uh, as we go along. Um, there, um, as for clinical trials, they are um, happening worldwide. Um, there's a total of 33 exosome therapy uh, clinical trials registered, um, 20 of which using uh, MS-derived um, um, uh, exosomes. Uh, and there's a lot of, they are mostly, of course, used for biomarker studies. Uh, this is what they were originally used for as biomarkers for diseases. And um, as you can see here, so where we stand in, like, uh, in the middle of this uh, clinical trial uh, map, um, so this is like, okay, we're in the green area here. Uh, we're still on the experimental side though, but you can see that there are clinical trials, especially for cancer uh, happening in, in the MENA region, or it's starting to see the, the light. Um, I'm I'm going to discuss. So the this is like um, it's it's an expensive experiment to perform like working with EVs. Uh, so um, the grants uh, that usually we uh, we apply for are like Science and Technology Development Fund is a very common grant uh, in Egypt, and uh, this was uh, one of the grants that, that the late Professor Dr. Ghada Murad applied for uh, to uh, fund and equip the lab. And uh, Professor Radohan has also uh, received an SCDF grant, which is ongoing uh, as well. Uh, we have a multiple of 10 projects running in Serma from 2020 to 2024, worth almost more than 15 million, um, and three of which are in the field of EVs. Um, they're not entirely our project. Like some of them are, we are PIs. Some of them are um, um, external candidates who are PI of the project, and they are um, using our lab as a home to perform their experiments. Uh, and there is also the Alexandria uh, Initiative Grant, um, which you discussed in, in the beginning while introducing me. So this was it's like a small micro grant. It's, it's a very small grant, uh, enough to just fund one project or one research idea. Uh, but it's a great initiative to help uh, postdoctoral researchers. It's aimed at uh, young researchers who are in the postgraduate, uh, postdoctoral, sorry, uh, um, um, field. Um, and um, uh, our lab received two of these, uh, one of which um, IMPI and um, in the field of uh, EVs and muscle regeneration. Um, and then we, there is the CV Rep Foundation where we also, Dr. Red Womhan received a grant uh, as PI, and this is the work on their publication right now. Uh, we are hoping um, to receive another grant from the National Academy of Sciences, which is, which is an Egypt-US uh, collaborative grant with STDF. 
which is a huge grant as well. And, um, and we also applied for it in, in the field of EVs. So let me talk about our challenges. Um, although it, it, it seems like it's going well, but uh, we do have challenges and um, I'm going to discuss how we over, we're trying to overcome these challenges. So uh, I would say that our major number one challenge is access to facilities and equipment needed for IV isolation. So uh, although we have a basic uh, equipment um, they're not even they're quite advanced like flow cytometry confocal microscopy and fluorescent microscopes as well as the other equipment needed for um uh, cell culture um the like the, the older lab was built for cell culture practices um however we we still lack the facilities and equipment needed for EV isolation uh so this is where we we should come and we should add on to to our lab so the major equipment needed for EV research is the ultra centrifuge, the transmission electron and zeta sizing. Um, and uh, we outsource all of these uh, to, to all these equipment in neighboring uh, faculties. Um, it's like, it's hard to get an electron microscope. I, I think we will continue outsourcing that part. That's no problem. Uh, the zeta sizing would be nice to have uh, on, on, uh, on, on bench. Uh, the ultra centrifuge, I would have to say, is the, our biggest challenge because there is actually only two ultra centrifuges in the city. Uh, one being just next door, just like uh, I'm two kilometers away, uh, and the other being like um, outside the city where you have to actually commute. And when it's down, being like one close by ultra centrifuge um, is quite challenging with the booking. Uh, um, there's a lot of traffic on the ultra centrifuge and it usually goes down and when it goes down it stays down for a long time um, I remember doing my PhD it was down for a whole year so I, I had to uh, improvise and look for other uh, options uh, because I couldn't just wait one year this is where I had to commute and use other methods uh, of isolation um, so I think this remains our biggest challenge until now. Um, our second challenge was getting updated information and hands-on training on new methodologies and technologies. Um, so where we started was just the basic isolation and basic characterization methods. Uh, we, are, we always follow up on the MIS uh, SEV guidelines and there is a lot of updates, okay? And we need to keep up with the literature. Uh, so there's a lot of methodologies we try to um, bring on board, like using flow cytometry to uh, characterize the EVs. Uh, we can we bought the antibodies, but we need to figure out the the right settings for the flow flow cytometry. So there's uh, we are um, doing our best. We're look we're looking up things online, webinars. We're um, um, attending workshops, communicating with uh, authors. Uh, there, but there's still in this area, I, I would say that there's a lot of trial and error going uh, on. Uh, but this, I mean, like we, we, this is how we got here with trial and error, and this is research. Uh, challenge three, which is the funds. But um, like I was saying, we are trying to, uh, we are starting to see more funds um, to purchase. Um, so the funds to purchase equipment is quite hard because the funds are usually enough. Uh, for the reagents needed for downstream experiments. So it's either you just buy, use the fund for one machine or you use it for multiple uh, downstream experiments. So we always opt for uh, the, the experiments. So uh, we still need funds to purchase um, equipment. And throughout our previous, like I was saying, on ongoing research, we always adhere to the guidelines. And this is our guide where we uh, always try to refer to while uh, doing EV research and, and in our publications. Um, so then comes the society. So um, with these challenges, um, although we're starting to build up um, like methodologies and expertise, but we thought that uh, hand in hand, uh, we should uh, as well network and communicate as well. Um, so this is how it basically started. Hey, let's start a society. It was basically a very uh, casual, um, it wasn't even a meeting. It was uh, just casual texting between uh, uh, myself and Dr. Radwa. And we're like, hey, let's start a society. 
uh, we Googled up the name Egyptian Society of Exocere Vesicles. We couldn't find it. So this was a good sign uh, for us to start. Um, good thing Dr. Radwa had the right connections to um, do all the paperwork, which is a tremendous amount of paperwork and legalities uh, to start an official society. Uh, so we started up and we uh, recruited um, the rest of the board, which is uh, Dina Rustam, I mentioned earlier, was one of also the first people who worked on EVs. So I thought the first people who worked on EVs should be the ones um, you know, starting or founding the society. Uh, Dr. Samar Ashe is a member also of our team and uh, she's a pathologist and head of nan the nanotechnology lab in uh, Sirma. So um, along, her along with her expertise in nanotechnology, uh, we thought that this is also considered as nano vesicles and um, it would be a, a, her input to our society would be uh, great. So uh, we started this society and uh, let me explain the logo. The logo also has a story. Uh, so this is the supposed to be the, the lotus flower, which is symbol symbolic of Egypt. Um, and also symbolic, what to our surprise, when we, we just liked the way it looked, but then when we kind of digged up some history about it, we saw that um, lotus flower, flower is a symbol of regeneration and reproduction. So um, we, we drew the flower with EVs uh, coming. So this was just started uh, last year, uh, but we're, we're starting strong. Um, our vision is to create a strong network of uh, EV researchers and frontiers that will help in dissemination of knowledge and change of expertise, exchange of ex expertise. Um, so although we are, um, we, we we always ask um, or uh, uh, yeah, look for ways to improve our methodologies, we want to as well uh, uh, disseminate our knowledge and expertise as well. And our mission is to advance EVs research and highlight scientific discoveries in different aspects of health and disease. Um, and um, there's this MOVE uh, uh, program. Uh, this was supposed to be an animation. So uh, there's this great program in Europe. It's called Mobility for Vesicles Research in Europe. I think it's a great, great initiative. And I tried to hop in, but they said it's only for Europe. So. Um, one of our like um, goals is hopefully someday we will we'll create a mobility program uh, such as that one that will include maybe all the world, um, not just Europe. Um, so our events, uh, activities and outreach, what we've done so far. Uh, so besides the lots of meetings and paperwork uh, needed, accepting uh, members and revising applications, uh, we have um, participated in conferences and workshops and, of course, the networking and website launch. Uh, the conferences, um, I'd have to say it, we were very lucky to to um, like hold a whole session in this Africa Health Expon, which is a, a major um, medical exhibit. Uh, which is done in Cairo, uh, and it's it's kind of a, a central hub for health innovation and trade in Africa and Middle East. And it's organized by the Egyptian Unified Recruitment Authority and Arab Hospitals and Federations, uh, and lots of healthcare uh, stakeholders um, and from governmental institutions actually uh, contribute uh, and invest in investing in the health sector, contribute to this um, to this uh, conference so or medical exhibition. So it was. Uh, a, a great spot to uh, showcase and um, uh, showcase our work and our um, and our facilities. So um, we were lucky last uh, this year, actually this summer, to hold this session. We in the Africa Health workshops, uh, we had a whole session dedicated to extracellular vesicles, uh, where we talked about extracellular vesicles as next generation regenerons, and where Dr. Radwa talked about them. In the, um, in the, where we use them as regenerative tools. Uh, I discussed them in cancer biology. Uh, Dr. Summer discussed how they were used as natural drug, drug delivery system. And then uh, uh, there was a whole collaborative work from the whole team uh, where we um, showcased uh, the whole technical workflow of extracellular vesicles through. And this took actually a month of preparation where we uh, videoed, uh, we videotaped uh, all the steps we have done in isolation, characterization, and everything, uh, along with lots of animations to um, 
to just demonstrate all the work that I previously mentioned. And this uh, was actually very, um, it was a good uh, outcome to see at the end. Uh, hopefully we'll post it on the society's website uh, soon. Uh, it was also interesting that when, during this medical exhibition, we, st we didn't know who else was working on EVs in, in Cairo or in Egypt, but uh, we saw a lot of audience interested. And as soon as we finished the, our uh, session, we saw a lot of, um, we had a lot of questions and questions from people who seem like they know what they're doing and they, uh, they are actually conducting uh, EVs research, and they were they were saying to us, "Hey, we didn't know that somebody else was working on EVs." Uh, and then we exchanged cards, so it was really um, it felt like we were reaching, we were actually reaching out and um, uh, performing our what we want to do mainly is to network and to communicate uh, our science. Uh, we also uh, participated in other um, conferences and uh, talked about EVs in our, uh, there's this annual uh, Cardio Alex um, conference that happens every year in Alexandria, uh, mainly focused on cardiovascular medicine and cardiology in general. But however, during past years, they, uh, there was a special uh, session dedicated to basic sciences. And we kind of started uh, invading that session uh, with our talk on um, secret home and EVs um, as well. Um, we also participated in uh, international conferences like the ISSCR conference in 2020, where I um, displayed my PhD work in a poster presentation uh, during that time. Um, the workshops we did, so ECEV has partnered with CVRAP Foundation uh, to host an esteemed cardiovascular biology and transition medicine workshop. Uh, that was also in June. Uh, it was a part of like a satellite event for the annual Cardio Alex conference. So we took the opportunity of having uh, uh, international uh, speakers and we invited uh, one who was a regular at our lab. She came before to our lab, Professor Rosalinda Madonna, the Department of uh, Pathology. Uh, and we, we performed a workshop. Um, she's also someone who has worked on EVs uh, a lot in, uh, and in the, in the field of cardiovascular medicine. So it was a very intense, uh, concentrated uh, two-day workshop um, that she showed several techniques of endothelial cell isolation and culture. And she showed us how to uh, isolate EVs from the heart tissue. And um, we kind of like um, took the opportunity and uh, we did several troubleshooting with her on isolating EVs. So this was really a, a fruitful event. Uh, and it was under the um, name of ECEV, our society. Um, apart from the networking, so the, I think the, the first act or the first action we took um, while um, when we started the society was uh, putting our name up there. And um, this is where I connected with the ECEV, uh, the International Society of Exercise Vesicles. It was during their, um, I think it was during their, um, annual conference time that the one was in Seattle and I got lots of invites and in the like the through the email and there was this session um for uh, showcasing your society so and we had just started the society so I, I emailed the back say, hey I, I can't make it but could you put our, our name uh, there uh she said yes so just give me your information and there we put our names and our contact information uh, uh, up in the global EV network. So if you look up global EV network, you can find us uh, there, the Egyptian Society of Accessional Vesicles. I think this is very um, important because when people look for EVs, uh, they look to the global EV, the international first, and then they start going down from there to see if there are any uh, societies um, in, in neighboring regions. And, and I, I'm also looking up the, the EV network. I saw that we were the only ones actually in Africa. Uh, so I think we're off to a great start. Um, one minor contribution I'd have to say, this is uh, last but not least, uh, during my, uh, when I was writing the paper for the PhD, um, I was drawing a graphical abstract using BioRender. And then when I was drawing up the methodology part where, the, where it was just isolating the EVs, they are culturing, then the centrifugation, then con collecting the media. And then I stopped the ultra centrifugation. I couldn't find the icon for it. So this is kind of distressing. I didn't want to mislead people and just put a, a regular centrifuge. 
So um, uh, I emailed them. I told them I want an ultra centrifuge icon. So this is the email from 2019, and they said they've updated the app with our request for ultra centrifuge machine. So uh, there it is, and um, I'm happy to contribute to the EV Society with this uh, icon. Um, thank you so much for listening, and um, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Thank you, Dr. Tabet. It was a really interesting talk. There's a lot of work to be involved in Egypt. It's really nice to see. Uh, I'm going to check the chat to see if anyone has any questions. Uh, so far, there's a lot of praise about the job that the, the Egypt Society is doing. Um, I don't know if anyone has any questions that would like to ask. You can unmute yourself and ask Dr. Tabet. Otherwise, me or my Mona can start a little bit the conversation. Uh, I will start with one question. Uh, okay. Did you think he was much difficult to establish the society in Egypt? Because like you said, there was many people like doing EV work. Do you think it was like hard or you started it to try to see if more people will want to jo join in? How was that process? Um, so yeah, the, that's a good question because well, first of all, we, we thought this is a highly specialized area. And if it's highly specialized and we started like with maybe three people working on it. And then as you saw, it went up and it's continuing. So I thought this is this is the time to form this society. It, it was quite hard uh, to pick actually the the members who are actually interested in, in that EV research. Uh, but we thought this is a highly specialized area and not a lot of people are, are doing this in Egypt. And if we can form this society and gradually grow with it, because we are growing with it as well, like we're still learning, um, then this would eventually form a, a great collaborative and a great um, community of EV researchers and where we could all together stand out within the international world. Because basically we're doing what every what everyone else is doing. Uh, when we check the papers, there's nothing different. It's, it's just a matter of... Uh, What's your research idea? What facilities you have? The more facilities uh, and equipment you have, the more you have to, the more you can add on. Uh, so with with right funds and with right um, guidance, I think we could easily make this happen. I, th maybe the hard part was doing all the paperwork so to to take steps. Like every step we take, we have to be um, legally backed up and legally supported by paperwork. I would say I would say that was the, the the hard part, but like inviting people, I think that's that's no problem. Yeah, so coming from um, from a similar background because we are like we're starting our EV research here and we've been facing similar problems. Like our lab is a, like region for regenerative medicine and. Uh, issue engineering and biomaterials and we are the first to start EV research so we faced these uh, problems with the facilities and we have to travel you know just to get there to measure our yes. EV concentration or something so yeah have you considered uh, other other methods of isolation for the EVs like in our case we we bought the TFF you know the tangential flow filtration it was uh, for us it was more feasible than using ultra centrifuge especially for therapeutic the, application. The ultrafiltration, we use the ultrafiltration tubes to concentrate the media. Um, but then we have, again, ultracentrifuge to isolate as it means. Uh, we haven't tried anything else because we, our research is in take down some over, we've read, Hundred times the rules of isolation to downstream applications. So, um, I, I think we have candidates that are now looking into buying the um, the isolation, the plasma isolation kits, 
which are way too expensive. So we always also on the economic uh, point of view, um, ultra certification is also the most economic uh, way to uh, yeah, the I max need. kit. and then purify them so I'm, i i from the way i see it, there's no way to buy we have as a small This should help with collaborations and form um, some kind of agreements and um, and these agreements in the fund. Yeah, I think there was a connection problem. So maybe. Yeah, I think it the connection fell right. Yeah, we can see if Doctor Tavet like just joins in. I was having a bit of a problem, but I thought it was my my end. Sourcing it's still. A... I think maybe if we stop the video, will help with the connection. I don't know, we can try. It was fine on my side, yeah. Okay. So I was I was just um saying that um outsourcing is it's not bad also because it gives opportunities to uh form and the funds will means. So this is like my small piece of advice to you and uh, that's it. If you have any more questions, uh, I would be happy to answer your questions. Just email us. Uh, we'd, happy, we'd be happy to collaborate. And I know there it's late at some end of the... I could fit some of listening and tuning in. Uh, it's great. Uh, I was also, my, I also first, um, when my Muna first emailed me, I told her we, we do have a hot spot or a soft spot for um, Malaysia because we used to get a cohort of Malaysian students studying uh, at our university and they were like all cute and all uh, very respectful we we like teaching them as well so uh, I couldn't turn out down the invite for um, for Malaysia uh, at all and I'm hoping somewhere in the future I can actually visit Malaysia and keep up the good work with the networking and uh, hopefully I can uh, log into the your future webinars as well Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Thank you so much. Yeah, there's no more questions in the chat. There's a lot of praise. Um, my one, I don't know if you have anything else to ask. I have one more question, but uh, yeah, just go ahead. Um, I wanted to ask like about the funding. I know you mentioned a few like grants, but is it hard to get funding um in the Middle Eastern compared with like compared with Europe and uh, America? I'm guessing there's like funding bodies. So can you is there any European ones that you can apply to or any like worldwide or you just like more uh, restrained to the ones from Middle Eastern funding bodies? Um no, um, I wouldn't say we're res restrained, but it's easier to get like local funds. Mm -hmm. uh, so even that National Academy of Sciences that Egypt is um through the STDF. So it's like, like if this is a collaborative grant, you know, us the DF, a local funding body will provide us with the money, and the National Academy of Sciences provide the other uh, um, collaborative grant um, uh, lab with the money on their side. So um, I would say it has to be through um, an Egyptian or Middle Eastern uh, society or a funding body. But uh, like, I mean, I've applied to Fulbright before, but again, this is also binational. Anything I think that's binational and has agreements is easier to uh, apply for uh, 
uh, rather than just pure European or American. But I have applied for like small funds from like UK societies for just professional development. And I, I guess they're easy for, and sometimes you can actually get basic small equipment or, um, or travel grants from these. And it and gets with, easier with expertise, I have. Yeah, with time, yeah. Uh, is it easier to make collaborations? Or is it easy like to make them in Egypt or go to Europe or America? How is the collaboration um, there in Egypt? Um, so basically, most people who have uh, thought, thought to do collaborations are the ones who actually uh, have been to U.S. or European labs. Um, mm -hmm. Like the, this U.S. collective grant, I'm, uh, I applied for it with someone, my colleague in, in the U.S. So it's so much easier when you know someone. Right? If, you don't, if they haven't worked with you, I think it's it's just a gamble. Uh, but a lot, we we are seeing over the past few years a lot of um, people in the, Canada and America who are interested in uh, collaborating with us. Um, so I guess this is gradually becoming uh, easier. Yeah, it's good to because know it's that. a big fund and it's a cooperation, a cooperative grant. So uh, mm. if to, for them to get their money, they have to cooperate with us. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. That that's a great way to establish collaborations. Uh, there is a question, there is someone in the chat, Loai. You can either write your question or you can unmute yourself and ask your question to Dr. Tavet. Loai? Is Loai still here? Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, thanks so much. Um, actually, uh, uh, I'm Loai Sawi. I'm doing my. <laughs> So, um, so I think your connection is not very good. We are having a bit of trouble in hearing you. I'm so proud of uh, this session with them. Uh, is it clear right now? Yes, yes. No, it's good. Yes, yes. Better. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so um, again, I'm uh, I'm Loyal Sawi. I'm sorry for this crowd. I'm Loyal Sawi, and uh, I'm doing my master's degree at uh, C term. And I'm uh, from Cairo, Egypt, so I'm so proud, uh, and I'm yeah, I'm, I'm so glad that uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Iman shared uh, the session with us. So I just have two questions. The first question is uh, related to um, the bias scaffolding uh, that's uh, already mentioned in your uh, presentation that you were uh, trying to use the bias scaffolds to um, uh, make the EVs more stable. Uh, but then you didn't mention a lot of work about it. So since I'm working on the scaffolding and biomaterials, so I'm a bit uh, curious about this point. The second point is that uh, I know there are lots of challenges related to the funds, et cetera, but I need to know more about the regulation of the clinical trials uh, in Alexandria or, or in Egypt generally. And is it um, easily or accessible to be... Uh, I mean, you, we can take it like as easy as that, or there are uh, some restrictions related to uh, our uh, region. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Luai. Um, so for so your first question, uh, yeah, we haven't really done that uh, so much. So it's, it's been done, the scaffolding has been done once. It's been done a lot of times using cells because cells are easier to attach to these biomaterials, Like, but giving the EVs in their small size, they, they actually fall off. So you have to like uh, create uh, or fabricate these uh, scaffolds with very small uh, nano size. Uh, so we had one candidate who did this and right now the can I'm working with the other candidate who's using hydrogel uh, matrix to, to load these EVs. Uh, so the, the basis of this using the scaffolds is that because they get swiped up so easily by the circulation. So uh, most of our work is on in vivo animal models. So we want to keep them there for longer. Uh, and we also saw our results on um, some of the in vivo studies that they, they are effective, but short lived. So that's why our focus started to now shift also to how to make them like stay there for longer. Uh, without having to inject so many times. So th this is the, like two of our uh, ongoing projects are during uh, using these scaffolds to make them stick um, 
and like slowly slowly get released into the muscles or or um, deep tissues. I don't know if this answered your question. So. As yeah, for also I'm the biofabrication, yeah, the, the fabrication also, we do also outsource this to the faculty of dentistry uh, where they um, they have 3D bioprinters and the uh, printers, sorry, um, and they have, um, uh, they, they create the, these scaffolds and they test them at our lab. Yeah, uh, that's for, great. So for the second for, part, the clinical trial. Yeah, so we do have another center, a uh, center of excellence, just like similar to ours, just dedicated for clinical trials. It's a clinical trial center uh, run also by one of our professors who also happened to be a medical physiology. Um, um, and the, yeah, there I, I'm guessing because I'm, I haven't actually worked on clinical trials before, but there are a lot of ethical regulations and there's a lot of uh, stages of clinical trial you have to go through. Um, like the regular, it has to be uh, done on, on uh, preclinical trial and animal models first, and you have to get a, a great, we have to pass through a lot of uh, great rounds of ethical approvals before um, uh, heading it out and, and, and trying it on humans. So there, there are a lot of regulations um, in the center. I can happily share with you the uh, the, the the website for the clinical trial center. If you can, if you have more further, more specific questions, I think they will be happy to answer you. Thank you, thank you so much, doctor. Thank you. Thank you, Loai, for your question. Uh, we are almost in the end of the session, but if anyone else has like a last minute question, we can take it. Um, you can just uh, maybe I can read this from uh, Dr. Nor Hayati. She's the the sure. president of the. Society for Extra Service, the Malaysian Society for Extra Service Vesicles. So she, yeah, she says the excellent job. Congratulations to you and your team. And uh, yeah, for this great effort and embark embarking EV research in Egypt, we are doing the same here in Malaysia. Hopefully this will lead to future collaborations between Egypt and Malaysia. And yeah, she's, uh, she says- I'd be very happy. happy. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. And Dr. Islam as well. And here, Aliya. Yeah, so, yeah. So keep up thank the you. excellent work and thank you so much. And yeah, it thank was, you so uh, much. Thank very you so exciting much. to know about the research in Egypt. Yeah, EVA research in Egypt is very interesting. And yeah, we're all facing a lot of challenges. So, yeah, yeah hopefully we can all overcome all of this. Yeah. Thank you so much for this uh, great effort on organizing such a great event. Uh, hopefully, uh, us all networks, this will happen, will lead to great discoveries and great uh, results, hopefully, inshallah. Thank you. Thank you so okay. much. Thank you so much, Dr. Tabat. It was a really interesting talk. We had a lot of attendance, which is always like a really nice... Uh, um, <laughs> It's nice to see that people are interested and they want to know more about societies that are not as usually like talked about and new, they are especially new societies. So thank you so much. Thank you, Maimona, for organizing thank the talk. You, and thank, you. thank you everyone that attended. And if you want, you can keep engaging with Snap or Twitter, email us, Instagram, LinkedIn. Um, and uh, yeah, just give us ideas for more things you would like to see, especially if you have like uh, some society in your country that is not Egypt and you would like to see featuring SNAP, just email us. And thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Bye. And good morning to everyone.